So I'm just gonna go over the tools that you're gonna need for this project. You will need a ruler or some straight edge, which could be your guide sticks. You will need a rolling pin and guide sticks. Clay, of course. A cup of water slip, which is 50% water, 50% clay. Your wire tool to slice the clay. Ribs, probably a metal or rubber rib. Pin tool for slipping and scoring. And then you'll need scissors, tape, pencil, and paper. So to make a slab cup, we're gonna actually, instead of sketching, make our, almost like the architecture of our cup through using paper. So I'm gonna kinda decide how tall do I want my cup to be. Do I kinda want it to be a shorter cup? A taller cup, wider cup, skinnier cup. Think about your hands too. Like I have tiny hands, so maybe I'll make a tinier cup because I can get inside my cup. If you have larger hands, if you're a football player and can, or a basketball player and can hold a basketball with one hand, you're gonna want to make your cup a little bit bigger so that you can get your hand in there. So, I'm gonna take my straight edge and kind of decide how high I want my cup to be, and then I will make my line and I will cut. All right, so I made my straight edge, I cut that straight edge line, and now I have this shape that I'm going to turn into a form. And now you can kind of decide where do I want my width to be. Do I want it to be tinier? That way I can fit my hand around it. You can kind of play around with your hand and the size. So I'll make a tinier cup. And then you're going to take a little piece of tape and just tape that together. So you'll take your form and you'll set it on top of your paper. And you're just going to trace right around it to get the perfect base shape. And then I'm cutting it out again. So now I have my base. Making sure it fits. Awesome. So I have some paper that overlaps in here, as you can see. So I'm gonna use my pencil to actually make a mark right where I have that tape line so I know when I cut my clay to cut it to that length. And then I'm gonna actually undo my form because we're gonna use this to cut out our clay. But you have to kind of roll this clay out really long to get that length of the paper you just made, and the bigger your cup, the bigger piece of clay you want to get. Okay, so I use my wire tool to cut my clay. And now, I'm just going to kind of push my clay out and try to push, push it out long ways so that it'll be easier to roll out. And then you guys know this, we've done lots of slabs. You're gonna use your guide sticks, get those laid down, get your rolling pin. Now I know some of you guys are struggling when you roll things out that the clay is sticking to your rolling pin. That's normal. The way that I combat that is I just start in the middle and roll a little bit in the middle and then roll a little bit towards me and then a little bit away from me but I always start from the middle. I never start from like the top and just roll all the way down because I think that's when it's starting to get stuck. So, from the middle out. And then I'm gonna change my angle here so that I can start to roll thickness-wise just a little bit. But keep that in mind and keep looking at your paper. Like, I'm actually pretty good thickness, so I might wanna just keep rolling out long ways. But if you pull your paper and your paper is still wider than the clay, you'd want to roll it out uh, horizontally. But I'm going to keep rolling it out vertically. Ooh, still not quite there. I just have to roll out a little bit more. Just gonna pick this. Awesome. My piece of paper finally fits on the slab of clay. So now I'm going to cut it out. And remember that I put that line there on my paper. And so you want to make sure that you're cutting where the line is, not the entire piece of paper. Alright, so at this point I have my form remade. I have my slab structure down here. I'm going to start to wrap my slab together. And I'm going to overlap them just barely. 
So that's what it looks like when I'm wrapping it together. Right there, just kind of barely kind of covering and overlapping just a little bit. And now I'm gonna check my form. So pretty close in size, so it looks good. Now I'm gonna go into that little overlapping area and I'm gonna start slipping and scoring it. So you guys can either use your pin tool, needle tool, fork, and I'm gonna get my slip. And if you guys really want this to be functional, I really advise you slip and score like crazy because you don't want any gaps on that side. Otherwise water is gonna come flying out of your cup and you don't want that. So I'm mixing up my 50% clay, 50% water. You can see it's nice and goobery. And then I'm just gonna start working. If you wanna just open up your slab to get in there to slip and score, we slip and score both connecting points. So you should be slipping and scoring two different areas. Marks, make sure you're going at least two different directions with your hatch marks, if not more. And then when you're done, your two points should look something like that with lots of hatch marks. Okay, so now I'm gonna start to put my cup together. I'm gonna push those two points together with just a slight overlap. Okay, so now that's kind of what it looks like. And then I'm gonna go in once I've just very lightly put them together. Now I'm really gonna start pushing them together, smoothing them out from the inside and the out. I haven't put my bait, my bottom on yet, so I can flip it over and get on this side of the piece as well. I'm really, really just smoothing that area out, pinching it together, pressing it together. At school, I think the rubber ribs will be better for you guys. And you can smooth out where that seam is. The goal is to make it look like there's no seam at all, that it's just totally seamless, beautiful, and smooth. So now that's where my seam was. You can't see it anymore. And even if you look at the top and the bottom, you can't see where that seam is. So that's the goal. Now you have to get your bottom cut out. So I'm gonna take my little bottom paper piece. I have a little bit of extra slab left because I rolled it out big enough. So I'm just gonna set it on there and trace it and cut it out. And then we'll do the exact same thing we just did with our cup. We will slip and score it to death. All right, I'm just gonna check really quick that it fits, awesome. And back to slipping and scoring. Now make sure you take as much care for the bottom as you did that seam because the bottom's equally as important. Water can come out of it very easily if it's not slip and scored really nicely. Again, make sure those hatch marks are going into two different angles. Okay, so now I have my two pieces. They're both slip and scored a lot and I'm going to attach them together. Kind of just gonna wiggle it first. And if it wiggles a lot, then there probably is not enough water and slipping and scoring. But as you wiggle it, it should kind of stick at some point. So now my base is stuck, I can't wiggle it anymore. And I'm gonna flip my cup over and very gently just start to push these edges down. And similar to how you guys used the rubber rib, you can take your rubber rib and start to smooth out this seam as well. And then I'm gonna stick my little fingers down there and smooth out that bottom area at the base where the seams are meeting down there. So you can use two fingers, get them nice and wet, and basically just kind of go all the way around your rim, smoothing that out and just using my fingers like this, like a little pinch. And I'm just going around and smoothing it out with water. But that's your basic making a slab cup technique and making your little form. So that's what we're doing today and maybe even into tomorrow. So thanks for watching.